This conference will now be recorded. Good evening. I'm going to call to order this regular town council meeting for Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. Um, we're going to go into the agenda and then after the roll call, I'm going to do the announcements for this web meeting, which I'm kind of hoping is our last. Um, all right. Uh, please rise for a moment of silence. I have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Fishbine. Laughlin. Here. Marone. Here. Morgenstein. Shortel. Here. Tata. Here. Testa. Zandri. Here. Chairman Cervoni. Here. Um, I just got a text that counselors Morgenstein and Testa seem to be having trouble with the link. So I'm just going to try and resend the uh, meeting link. No, I see the problem. Oh, Council Test is here. The, the link requires manual entry. Thank you for your patience. Uh, for the benefit of those new to our virtual council meeting, please bear with me for those of you who aren't. Members of the public, please keep all of your microphones muted during the meeting unless you're the person asking a question. Also, kindly keep your camera inactive unless you're speaking. This system does not deal well with multiple simultaneous speakers. The audio from only one person will come through at a time. Therefore, please, only speak if you have been recognized and if you are interviewing someone, uh, please allow them to answer your question uh, instead of talking over them. I do not have a traditional wooden gavel with me at my workstation. I don't need one. Uh, as the meeting organizer, I have a mute all button and as people know, I'm not afraid to use it. If people aren't participating respectfully, I'll be forced to use that button so the person who has the floor can be heard. Um, We'll now proceed to go through the agenda. If you wish to question or comment regarding a particular agenda item, please type into the chat bar. You'll see a chat bubble at the upper right side of your screen. Click on that, type in the chat bar, and um, I will recognize you. Um, and I'm gonna beg people to not use the chat bar as a social media experience. Um, it gets cluttered and I lose track of who's next supposed to speak and people get offended and, you know, these meetings take longer than they have to. Um, when I am gathering public comment, I will first look for questions from those who are using a computer or a smartphone app uh, to participate. Once I've heard from all those logged in digitally, I will look for comment from those who are dialed in with a phone. 
If you are acknowledged and intend to comment, you must introduce yourself by stating your name and address. Um, also, uh, well, I think that's enough instruction for one meeting. Let's see how it goes. Can we have a motion on the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I move we approve or accept consent agenda items A through Z. We have a second. Second. Move, sounded like the second was from Councillor Tata. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please say opposed. nay. Nay. All right, we, uh, we have seven ayes and one nay, therefore the consent agenda passes. On to the public question and answer period. Uh, Mr. Chardu, oh, I'm sorry, just for the record, item four, there are no items removed from the consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Chardulo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a few weeks ago, I attended a uh, virtually an ordinance meeting. And at that time, uh, Councillor Zandri presented a proposal for an ordinance. It was a uh, taxpayer credit ordinance. There was a fair amount of discussion on it. My understanding was that uh, as a result of that discussion, uh, that Mr. Zandri was going to come to the council with that as an agenda item to be discussed. So I'd like to ask Councillor Zandri where he is at with that item. Um, it, it still needs work within the committee, as far as I know. Councillor Zandri, if I'm mistaken, you can correct me. No, I, I think we left it off with the committee that we were going to bring it up for future discussion at the ordinance committee because it had to go through that body first before we brought it through to the council. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's the way we left off of it as a group. Could I, Mr. Chairman, I... Is that Councillor Shortell, Chairman of the Ordinance Committee? It is. It is Councillor Shortell. My recollection was the opposite that we felt that based on Janice Small's feedback it was better served going through the regular council agenda but I, I could be wrong too I, I could be mixing it up with something else because we, we we kick around a lot of stuff in ordinance committee that, that was a while ago too I'm trying to recall yeah it was it was over the winter it was over the winter it was like in, I think it was in February and just um I believe I don't have the schedule in front of me we, we canceled our ordinance meeting for next Tuesday and we're pretty much almost beyond the agenda window anyway. Our next ordinance meeting isn't until August. Not that we can't schedule one earlier, we could, but anyway. Yeah, if I can add to that, I guess it was, there was a fair amount of discussion. And I think that, uh, again, my perception was pretty much what uh, Councillor Shortell articulated, that the direction was because really that, that, the ordinance committee couldn't come to an agreement. Again, my perception. So the the idea was to bring it here and uh, have you folks discuss it and decide what to do with it. I think that there is a fair amount of support for such an ordinance. If I'm not mistaken, Councillor Morgenstein is a supporter of it. She's uh, articulated, articulated that in the past on occasion and frankly i think that is one way that we can address an ongoing problem that we have with regard to our budgeting process and the fact that literally almost every year i'll say every year the uh, the administration brings forward a budget that they believe is accurate the council approves the budget that they believe is accurate. And then at the end of the year, we find out that there are major, major uh, oversights in it. And we end up with 
massive surpluses. I, I brought this, tried to bring this to the attention of the mayor at the budget session. Uh, the budget ending this past June for 1920, we, we ended with uh, a surplus of $8.8 .8 million. This year through April, we just received the April report <clears throat> and we're sitting almost $14 million underspent and we only have two months left in the year. I will be extremely surprised if we not only Mr. Chair, we lost your audience, but I'm going to ask you to wrap up because million being the uh, budget of for this year, I'll be surprised if we spend 169 million with those last. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tardulo. Can't hear you. Could you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. Please. Yeah, you don't have a great connection. Um, you, you've We've got several other people who want to comment, and you've exceeded your time for individual public comment. It's three minutes per speaker, 20 minutes for the whole session. So uh, thank you. Duly noted, we're going to revisit the minutes and see where we were with that proposal. Okay. Let's, get that, let's get that ordinance on. Let's quit dragging our feet and get it on the agenda, please. Nobody's dragging thank their you. feet, Mr. Chardulo. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, Bob, good evening. Been in the mill for a long, time. long. Time. Good evening, Chairman Cervoni. Bob Gross, Long Hill Road, Wallingford. A um, couple questions to the mayor through the chair, and for the council's benefit. Um, I noticed in the day after the council had its meeting of the last meeting, uh, there was discussion of whether the money could be used to uh, the money that was coming from the federal government through the American Rescue Plan Funds Act could be used and the mayor and uh, con uh, controller Bose were kind of saying no. And then the next day in the paper on the front page, um, Meriden property tax increase averted, Meriden budget will use about 1.2 million anticipated federal American rescue plan funds to save taxpayers from a property uh, tax increase. Not just to, for your benefit, because we'll be getting more than that. They're getting more than that, of course, too. Um, so I hope that you use it that way if you, if you need to. Um, to the mayor, do you plan on hiring a somebody to replace Scott Hanley? We have uh, our staff of um, video technicians uh, are handling the work at this point. Um, the governor has extended remote meetings, which means there's no real television coverage until I believe June, it may be June 30th. Um, so it's it, it's very much in a situation where the director position really um, is is not needed given what what the work involves at this point. All right, I, I don't agree with you and I'm sure other people don't um, because you know this will end. I mean, it is going to end sooner than later. Fortunately, it looks that way. Um, do you plan on doing, because you budgeted for it, so that it's in the budget. Do you plan on doing the pickleball pickleball courts? And I'm not a pickleball player. I've never played it. Don't have pickleball paddle. I'm just curious. Do you, Based on what you said in the newspaper, if it was accurate, you weren't too gung-ho about doing those. I'm not sure what newspaper article you read. I believe I stated that I'd be happy to do it. I think it's a good project, but it requires more than recreation. It requires the engineering department and potentially public works. It becomes a project that was not on the priority list from recreation in their submission of the budget. So it's a new project that must be added. Uh, currently, engineering has some. 20 to 25 different projects they're working on, All right. uh, including the parking lots in the downtown. So I'm told that we would expect later in the year that they would have uh, time to be able to uh, do the work necessary to put specifications together and determine uh, what 
what must be done in order to improve uh, All right. the pickleball so, capability. Okay, and so the question is then, um, the, the, they allotted 60,000. I'm sure you could go out to bid on that and not have it done by in town for 60,000. Do you do you plan on doing the parking lots across the street from Simpson Court? You mentioned just now. You do you still are they still on the agenda for this year for your doing those? Yes. yes. Okay. Great, because I see that Simpson Court is being completed already, and that was because according to you, how busy everything is, and I know it's being done by an outside contractor, and the same thing can be done with the pickleball courts. Um, you have that was in January. You you put in the on the agenda to do a private parking lot with taxpayers' money in January at the height of the ref, at the height of the pandemic, deaths wise and caseload knowing that it would be very difficult to do the referendum at that particular point in time. Um, and now that, that lot is done already. I mean, it's gonna be done what? A couple of days? And do you know what the, do you know, have any idea what the bids were on that lot? How many hundreds of thousands the town's spending on that? I don't have the bid prices. No, I believe that the estimate was somewhere, uh, some in the neighborhood of 300,000, but I, I, I'm not sure of the exact amount. And I, I obviously do not agree agree with you when you say we're paving private property. We're not. We have leases. That means that that property is public property for the term of the lease. There, there's winners and losers there, sir. I, I, I have to disagree with you on that because it's private. It's privately owned uh, parking lots. In 30 years, it reverts back to them, to the owners of the lots. You do not own the lots. You do not pay the taxes on the lots. Um, so Mr. You don't Gross, the yeah, legal sir. status, the legal status of that land is public use that's the legal status the lease gives us rights to use that for the public you cannot look at that as private property say what you will i mean i, I disagree with you on that um, um i appreciate your time and uh have a good evening and mr chairman just to just so everyone is aware uh, a private party a private contractor is doing that work however Engineering is involved, I, I'm assuming daily, because whatever the private contractor is doing, they must meet our specifications. And that requires engineering to stay in close contact with what the work, what work is being performed and that it meets our specifications. Uh, it's not simply putting out a bid. Engineering is involved in the pro in projects that they have developed specs on and have the duty to see that whoever is doing the work, whether it's public works or or town, uh, public works or a private contractor, that the work is conforming with the design and specifications as provided by engineering. So it's it's not a simple one and done. They, they are involved throughout the process. Since it's a private contractor, then pickleball for the 60,000 could probably be done for a private contractor if you really want to push it along. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Morgenstein. Yes, good evening, Larry Morgenstein, South Main Street. Uh, through the chair to the mayor, please, a question. Sure. Uh, the question is, thank you, Chairman Cervoni. Uh, prior to budget season, the town council had a lengthy discussion about electric uh, charging stations. And at the end of that meeting, it seemed that Mayor Dickinson, along with the council, looked to look into that more, and the mayor talked about putting together RFPs. So I'm asking what the status is currently for that. Yes, the uh, Rob Baltermitis is drawing up the specifications for uh, proposals and, and for a private party to be performing a project. And I'm, I'm expecting them in a very short time. He had told me, I believe it would be this week. Okay, that's very encouraging and thank you. That's all for tonight. Next up, uh, Adelheid Kofer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, good evening. I have a question regarding the MS4 program. Name and address for the record, please. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank Adelaide Cope for 35 Whistle Tree Road. Thank you. I have a question regarding the um, 
MS4 program. Um, give me one second, excuse me. Um, the small municipal separate stormwater systems program from CTD. If I understand correct, um, every April, towns like Wallingford need to submit a report about stormwater and a plan to minimize the impact of stormwater on our water quality. I was trying to find that somewhere online, but I couldn't. So I was wondering, has the town submitted this report yet? And where could I find it? Mr. Chair? Yes. yes. Uh, Mayor speaking. Um, Public Works is in charge of, of our compliance with uh, the MS4 program. We've hired a consultant. Uh, and my information is uh, our reports are um, filed annually. Uh, I would think uh, Public Works certainly should have a copy of that report. So that, that would be then Public Works to who I should ask, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, another question regarding water. Back in the fall, the Planning and Zoning Commission was discussing a, a uh, proposed amendment to the regulations, specifically to the IX and I-5 districts, which are also to a large part covered, um, comprised in the Watershed Protection District. I was just curious because in the winter, um, the mayor um, stated serious legal and policy concerns about this proposed amendment. Um, and as far as I know, there hasn't happened anything since. So I was curious um, if the mayor could please explain his concerns and if this um, process will resume anytime soon, the, the, the amendment, the proposed amendment discussion. The status of of the uh, language that is being analyzed uh, regarding protection of, of water uh, resources and development in the I-5, IX zones, that subject is, is uh, front and center with engineering as well as planning and zoning. We have hired a new town planner, Mr. Kevin Pagini. He has some background with regarding that subject uh, in his work in New York County. They, that is town engineer, Allison Kapuczynski and Mr. Bergini are working on language changes. We, we may be looking to hire a consultant. It may not be necessary, but uh, they are the ones assigned on this task and are um, proceeding with it. And do you have any any estimate on a timeline when that will come up again? Within the next few hope, months or half yeah, a I, year? I would, I would expect, I, I, would, I would hope to see something in a few weeks, but I, I haven't had a recent conversation uh, with uh, either of them on that subject, but um, Certainly, I want them to do a thorough job. So, uh, I'm I'm anticipating it would be sooner than later, but I can't be more definitive than that. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm I'm really just curious because uh, we are on town water, so I'm really interested in the watershed protection district. Um, may I ask one last question? I'll try to be quick. Um, the Materials Innovation and Recycling Authority, Mira announced that they will shut down the trash to energy plant in Hartford in the summer of 2022. And it is expected that the majority of our waste will then need to be transported out of state and that the fees will increase maybe dramatically. So I'm curious, how will this affect Wallingford residents, both who is using the town disposal center or using private haulers? And what could the town do to reduce the waste volume so we have not that dramatic increase of cost next year? Well, the town of Wallingford costs will will uh, be similar to whatever is visited upon the rest of the state. Um, you know, I, I 
I think it is certainly problematic that they plan to close MidCon, um, but without dwelling on what should or shouldn't happen at the state level, uh, at the local level, it would be very, very difficult to do um, much on this subject that will not increase costs. Any change in what we would be doing will increase costs for us. Um, problems with recyclings are the no markets. Uh, they talk about uh, dividing the waste stream so that food scraps uh, can be removed from the waste stream. So that, that would uh, reduce the weight of the garbage. However, the cost of dealing with the food scraps will mean increases in cost. Talk about having the food scraps be part of, of um, composting. Um, I haven't really heard answers as to how you deal with the issues of, of um, vectors, et cetera, being drawn to composting, uh, that is with leaves and brush, when food is being placed there, I, I, I'm not sure how you control the potential for rats, et cetera, to be uh, very much attracted to the location. So there, there's, there's a lot of talk going on. Um, I, I think at this point, there's nothing quick, quick or necessarily less costly that can be done at the local level in order to meet uh, meet the issues and the challenges involved. I I dare to disagree a little bit. I I do hope that there are um, options and projects that could help with either composting or in general reducing the just the pure amount of waste. Um, and I I would like to ask the council maybe in the upcoming months, because we only have basically one year left. Um, if if that could be on the agenda, if the town could um, encourage residents to use less, um, produce less waste or, or what, whatever the town could do to, to re reduce the amount of, of garbage and the fees for the residents. Thank you, that was all. Thank you, we are, out of time for public question and answer and on to item six which is a presentation by the economic development committee marketing committee and student marketing team from quinnipiac university regarding the commission's digital marketing initiative i understand that you're going to start mr mira uh, before he starts, I'm so sorry. Uh, can you allow me to share my screen so I can have the presentation up while he is introducing us? I was waiting for somebody to tell me exactly when you needed that to happen. So, uh, all right. Uh, Here it is. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good evening and thanks for, for the opportunity to uh, introduce you to EDC's latest marketing efforts. We would also like to thank the mayor for his support on this project and we appreciate the council's continued support to our, our commission. A year ago, life as we knew it was turned on its side. We were all in the grips of uncertainty. At that time, EDT chose to halt all scheduled marketing efforts and redirect our, our energy to redefining our strategies and, and an endeavor to reach a much broader audience. Tonight's presentation is the results of that effort. I think you'll be impressed with what the marketing committee has achieved uh, through Chairman uh, Mark Zingrass is about to show you. Mark, take it from here, please. Thank you, Joe. Um, the EDC's marketing committee members, Patricia Simbala, Rob Fritz, and Anthony Bracali, have been models of volunteerism as we work to educate ourselves on the building out of our new digital marketing strategy. 
All of our combined efforts were tactfully coordinated by economic development specialist, Tim Ryan. I want to thank the mayor for his support on this project and his confidence in his EDC. Back in September of 2020, in collaboration with the Quinnipiac University, we spe <clears throat> with specifics, we specifically worked with Associate Professor David Ch Tomchik. And together we hand selected via interview process, a student marketing team, affectionately referred to as our SMT. And this was to explore the benefits and pitfalls of a digital marketing strategy. This project was ascribed to them as a slice of the real world. You must commit <clears throat> for the entire school year. We were to meet several times a month to review specific deliverables. And your work as a team must reflect the integrity of the brand, which is Wallingford, that we must protect. I'm here to tell you that the work ethic of this SMT reinforces all of our faith in the generation that they represent. You're about to hear from three members of a seven member SMT that guided us through this journey. We will allow questions and answers at the conclusion of this presentation. And at this point, I'd like to uh, turn over the presentation to one of the students, Chandler Mers. Chandler. Hello, council members. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Myself and the rest of the SMT team greatly appreciate the opportunity that this town has provided us. Brenna, change the slide. Um, Dave Tomchak is an associate professor of entrepreneurship and strategy and game design at Quinnipiac. Under his and Tim Ryan's guidance, this team was formed with the goal of expanding the reach of Wallingford's beyond state lines. Tim knows Wallingford is a really unique, has a really unique strength with, within the state of Connecticut. The lowest mill rate and a low cost of power makes Wallingford incredibly attractive to businesses. The student marketing team has been building a social media portfolio for the EDC with the ultimate objective of attracting new and expanding businesses to the town, with the project starting in the month of September with the full team joining us in October. To get a better understanding of what businesses are looking for when they're moving or relocating to the town, the SMT conducted multiple weeks of research with the team was broken into three groups. The interview team met with local business decision makers who recently relocated and expanded or moved to the town. Counted their experiences during the process. The competitive analysis team identified team towns similar to Wallingford to see how they attract businesses and their strengths and weaknesses. The brand analysis team uh, researched and uh, ideals and perceptions Wallingford had already established within the town. This information and research uh, informed the team where Wallingford's strongest message was and what channels should be pursued. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Brenna Rose and I will be presenting about our different outreach channels. Uh, our first channel, which is college outreach, is one that I headed. Uh, so this right here is my information. I'm a recent QU graduate with a BS in supply chain management and entrepreneurship as my minor. And I'm currently pursuing my MBA with a concentration in data analytics. Uh, I'm from Nashua, New Hampshire, and I have experience working in project management with United Health Group. So our main goal with college outreach was to develop access to the workforce by creating partnerships and active lines of communication with surrounding college career service centers. Workforce access is the number one driver of businesses to a town, even before other factors such as location, culture, and financial benefits. This outreach channel was a continuation of the EDC and David Tomczyk's collaboration with the local superintendent and board of education, 
where they're working on curriculum development for the school district's career pathways program with a different student team. In my efforts, I contacted the career service departments of five local universities and four local community colleges in order to gauge a better understanding of how they connect their students with businesses. The information I learned was mostly in reference to career fairs and what job finding digital systems they use for their students, which they, we then dispersed out to local businesses. Our hope is to obtain this information each semester and to spread it to as many interested businesses as possible, as well as keeping up to date on what new activities career centers are looking into. Our email marketing channel was handled by Shay Kelleher. She is a recent QU marketing graduate from Massachusetts. She's experienced in digital marketing from working with Barstool Sports, as well as work within her sorority. The goal of our email marketing campaign was to inform businesses of the strengths of Wallingford and our business friendly culture. We are using uh, the current list of emails that is divided by sector, such as media and manufacturing. So we are working on growing this list by adding a pop-up subscription option on the EDC webpage. Messaging has included financial information and information about career fairs and job posting opportunities that was obtained through the college uh, outreach program. There are links at the bottom of each email as uh, to any pertinent websites or uh, to our webpage. We can gauge the success of these emails by the percent of emails opened as well as the click through percentages for any links. Currently, we are seeing an average open rate of 24%, which we hope to grow by growing our list of interested email content receivers. I also worked on our LinkedIn initiative alongside Chandler, who presented earlier. Uh, Chandler is a recent QU graduate with a BS in entrepreneurship and small business management. He's from Westfield, New Jersey, and has experience with project management working with Epsom A. LinkedIn was used as an offensive push to pull real estate brokers, business owners in Connecticut, uh, specifically in Wallingford, and C-suite individuals in Connecticut and surrounding states. We created a LinkedIn business page for Wallingford's EDC, where we post about Wallingford's business environment, strengths, and other events or information that we believe is relevant to our followers. We also are using a service called Sales Navigator to sift through leads and target the priorly mentioned groups. We then send them invites with a short message and a link to our Wallingford page where they can then follow the page and also message us back to start any conversation they want. This is used to drive our follower growth while we're still a young page. Once we grow in both follower count and content, growth will come more organically. Our LinkedIn page also links to the website to drive traffic and point towards an information, information gathering destination. John Meehan took charge of our Instagram initiative. He's working on his BS in entrepreneurship and small business management with an estimated graduation year of 2022. He's also enrolled in Quinnipiac's plus one program for his MBA with an estimated graduation year of 2023. He's from Morristown, New Jersey and has lots of social media experience as a founder of an Instagram page with over 1 million followers and as a former social media director for VSBRO, which gained 1000 users within its first week in the app store. The goal of starting an EDC Instagram page was to have a platform to disperse information to the local community about what the EDC is doing and how it affects the community. We currently post bi-weekly about current business news and development in Wallingford. Some of our past posts include information about Restaurant Week back in March, tax incentives, and COVID resources for businesses. We are currently working on growing our following by following small local businesses and community members. By following them, they will be prompted to follow us back and are then more likely to show up on similar individual suggested followers bar. While audience growth is currently manual, this sets us up for eventually having organic follower growth. We are currently seeing an average biweekly growth of 24 followers and a consistent growth in engagement, showing that people see and are interested in the content we are producing. Jack Hadamer conducted work on our next channel, which is our Facebook page. Jack is a recent QU advertising and integrated communications graduate from New Hampshire. He's currently an intern at New Hampshire Governor Sununu's office and has experience as a social media specialist. The goal of our Facebook page was to disperse local information and other pertinent news articles to the community in order to better public awareness. 
we were modeling our content off of what other towns tend to post on their Facebook pages. While starting a Facebook page was one of our main social media channels in the ideation stages, we ran into some roadblocks regarding rules of engagement. We wanted the page to have min minimal commenting capabilities as we wanted it to be a place for information gathering and event notifications. However, Facebook doesn't have a feature that easily allows for limiting comments or capabilities on a page. So we decided that since there are still benefits to having a Facebook page that outweigh the cons of having commenter capabilities, uh, we wanted to postpone launching our page until the other social media channels are better established so that we have experience and more focus to oversee comments and conversations. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Samantha Loud and I will be introducing the landing page redesign subgroup of the student marketing team. I worked alongside Callum Griffith, who is the founder and creative director at Composite, a data-driven branding and user interface user experience design studio based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, so he has eight years of experience in design and three years of experience specifically in digital strategy consulting. Um, as for myself, I just recently graduated from Quinnipiac's Accelerated 3 plus 1 business program with my bachelor's degree in marketing and an economics minor in May of 2020. And this past May, May 2021, I also received my MBA. Um, and on top of that, throughout my collegiate experience, I have had three years of digital marketing strategy experience working in high tech, publishing, and the health and wellness sectors. So really quickly, I also wanted to mention that Back in October, when this team was assembled, or September, October, uh, Callum and I didn't know each other, but since working together on the landing page redesign of this project, I have joined Composite and joined Callum as the digital marketing specialist, and we've continued to work together to elevate brands to exceed their potential online, as well as um, how we set out to do for Wallingford. So if you or anyone that you know of are in need of a digital refresh or their business or their organization, I encourage you to visit the website linked below, composite.global, and share it with whoever you think might need some help. So more specifically um, about the project that Calum and I were working on, once the team was divided up into subgroups, we got to work on auditing the current status of the website and specifically the landing page. And here we found that the landing page wasn't really designed in a way that could engage audiences fast enough as indicated by a high drop off rate on Google Analytics. And this is a major problem, especially today, given that Websites are now the first intermediary to develop a relationship with potential new businesses. Um, so today, what we like to say is that your website is the face of your brand. And if that is not the face that you want to portray and it is not engaging, then you're losing potential new audience members. So our goal then became to fortify the brand position um, and articulate it on the website. That was the key was to articulate it well. And that articulation would then support future digital marketing outreach via the different social media campaigns and whatnot. So once we uh, identified this goal, we then synthesized content uh, from all existing marketing materials, brochures and things like that, and organized the information in a way that aligned uh, information that would be relevant to a business's decision making process that would also therefore improve the user experience. Um, so lastly, the updated landing page includes things like a list of Wallingford's most compelling statistics, testimonials from highly regarded business owners, which I had also previously worked on the interview team at the initial research stage of this project. So I got to reach back out to some highly renowned business owners in Wallingford, and they were happy to give really great testimonials about uh, the town. And then finally, a carefully curated list of FAQs, frequently asked questions. Um, and all of these components have proven to build credibility for the brand, the Wallingford brand, and then leave a better impression on digital target audiences that would therefore engage more qualified leads. And luckily, as these improvements are all quanti quantifiable, um, I can dive into the data analysis on the results on the next slide. 
So very briefly, our benchmark period for data collection was a 90 day period before the landing page redesign audit, which happened in November. So we took, uh, looked at the data from August 18th, 2020 to November 16th in 2020. And then we compared those benchmark numbers, measurements to the 90 day period after the initial launch of the landing page, which was February 16th. So the, uh, the current status comparison is now from February 16th to May 17th. Um, and early on, as we were strategizing, I had asked Tim Ryan, uh, how can we measure success? How do you hope to quantify the success of this whole digital marketing initiative? What is that metric we're looking for? And what we came up with was the goal would to be have uh, would be to have more people calling uh, the economic development specialist phone number listed on the website. So that became our goal conversion metric. And how many people are calling the economic development specialist was something important to note here is that the landing page success also houses the success of all other outreach initiatives that we just mentioned, including the college outreach channel, um, email marketing, and all of the social media uh, campaigns. So before the landing page update, there was only one phone call within that 90 day period. And since the landing page update, plus all of the external marketing initiative, digital marketing initiatives that we had just touched upon, there were a total of nine phone calls. So we have an increase of 800% in goal conversion, which is a very promising uh, measurement. Obviously, there is still room to grow, but again, we can dive a little bit deeper into the analysis of how our landing page was improved, and we also saw that user engagement increased by 50%, meaning that the total number of landing page sessions increased, and sessions as defined by Google Analytics is the number of visits where users are engaged with your website. So that just means that the content that we um, are that we had organized on the landing page was more relevant to the people that were seeking out the landing page. Um, and finally, perhaps what I think is the most promising metric of them all is that since the landing page update, there has been an increase in 57% of new users. Uh, so we are positioned very well to continue growth and continue um, reaching out to new businesses because any new user is a potential new business. And lastly, before I touch on the timeline, I do want to reiterate, I have plenty of, uh, in the Q&A section, I'd be happy to go over any of those statistics. But finally, what we want to talk about right now is the time frame as well as next steps for this project to give you all a better idea of the trajectory. So. We spent October through late November conducting and sharing our research uh, as well as brainstorming ideas for channels and outreach. And then we narrowed down and expanded upon those individual ideas to form channel strategies. And then from January, around January and February were the soft launch for many of those channels. Um, currently the landing page is fully functional and all of the social media channels are being uh, followed and actively used. So we are still working on expanding audiences and forming messaging structures. Um, and while this may seem like a slow process, it's un it's intentional in order to protect the brand and avoid any missteps that could set us back. So the next step would then be to move more aggressively and launch platforms with more consistent messaging campaigns for the engagement, which is planned for September 2021. And another point that we want to highlight before we close is that the success that we've seen early in the stages of this project is very promising. And we've seen great growth from our social media channels and email marketing while still being in the early stages of development. So every channel has been instrumental in improving those analytics that we just talked about. And the web page, the landing page is just kind of the home of all of these strategies uh, going to work and being put together. So yeah, um, finally, I might, it might go without saying, but working on this team has been fantastic and we're all very proud of the work that's been completed. And I know that we're confident in the platforms that we've developed for the EDC. And I know that I'm personally, especially grateful for the opportunity um, to build these new relationships and all the doors that it's opened for me. So on behalf of the student marketing team, thank you guys so much for your time and your trust. And I'll turn the floor over to Tim Ryan, but I'd be happy to address any questions afterward. Very good, Samantha. Great job. Uh, Mr. Chairman, counselors, Mr. Mayor, thanks again for giving us the opportunity to present uh, to you tonight. I hope you are as impressed with this student marketing team, led again by Professor Tomczyk, as we have been throughout the whole process. I do want to take the time again to thank Professor Tomczyk and the team. Keep in mind that um, 
they were juggling very full academic schedules while they were doing this work for us. So you can tell by their list of accomplishments that um, they are very seriously engaged in their academics and uh, um, it, 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 uh, it shows in the out outcome of this project. So we started by asking ourselves, you know, why digital? Why do we need to use digital channels? I mean, our marketing efforts that we've used for years uh, have been very effective in making sure that we reach businesses uh, within the state of Connecticut. Um, the reason for digital is simply this. Wallingford, in our eyes, uh, is an oasis in the state of Connecticut. We have sustainable competitive advantages in this community that the state does not have. We have a very promising and solid reputation that we want to make sure that we can project not only within the state, but beyond the state. And the best way to reach beyond the state um, at this particular point in, in our time uh, history is, is digital. We know that we've got a state Department of Economic and Community Development whose charge is to take and bring business interest into the state of Connecticut, along with Advanced CT, uh, formerly CERC, the Connecticut Economic Resource Center. They too are, ch are charged with bringing businesses into the state of Connecticut. Um, but you know, no one can tell our story as well as we can tell our story. So we wanted to make sure that we could reach out and have Wallingford stand out in those conversations within its borders and beyond its borders. Um, so that's why we decided to uh, look at digital. You'll notice that early on in the research, it was a, ma it was a matter of studying and understanding whether digital uh, was, was the right strategy. What are the pitfalls of digital? Because as we know, and you've heard several times in the presentation, we have a brand to protect. Missteps are not an option, all right? We, we wanna make certain that we project Wallingford with pride, with enthusiasm, with energy, with business friendly, with, with a culture that says, hey, I wanna locate my business there. So we work very diligently on that and the students' uh, research reflects that as well. Sam mentioned that um, you know quality leads is really at the core of what our measuring stick is. Now, and what's a quality lead? It, you know, we're not selling widgets, as we all know. So it's not a matter of numbers. Um, I will, I will say this to the council because now it, it, it makes perfect sense to you that the data center initiative was one phone call to this office. But we don't, we're not going to measure our successes by how many phone calls we necessarily get. It's going to be about the quality of the phone calls we get. Digital enables us to take, as we begin, you know, become more mature uh, and, and uh, you know, just more accustomed to using it, it needs to become part of this office's DNA as to how we message in digital channels. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We have said for years that we just want to be in the conversation. When any business is looking to relocate, expand, we want to make sure that we're in the conversation in this town because we have a good selling story. And that's what this all of this initiative is about, is driving traffic so that we can get into the conversation. I will say beyond that, that um, economic development is, is a little bit like a department store. I mean, we have commercial property, we have you know, uh, industrial, uh, we have office space, we have manufacturing. There's right now, for example, take the warehousing sector. I mean, I, I've got a stack of people that would love to open up warehouses in Wallingford, and we don't have the inventory nor the space to, to put the warehouse. And land is not that is not um, currently occupied. The landowners are, are, in most every case, are well aware that someone would love to buy their property, but uh, if they're willing to sell it, they're on the list. So for us to go out and target more warehousing is is not the best use of our efforts. Same thing, frankly, with manufacturing. Manufacturing is a solid base for this town, but we have um, very, very little, and it's very small manufacturing spaces that are open. We have no manufacturing space of significance available. That said, you all are well aware of the fact that we've got 25% of our Class A office space vacant. So a digital strategy will enable us to take and refine through a tool that Chandler and Brenner are using um, within, within the... Um, within the LinkedIn uh, uh, channel, it'll enable us to refine and target office space users, whether they be engineering firms, marketing firms, you know, law offices, et cetera. Businesses that are predisposed to using those types of office spaces, we can now start to target, uh, you know, market to those, those people. So 
Um, I just want to um, say, lastly, let's see. Uh, um, you have through your budget and the mayor, I'd like to thank you publicly again for allowing the Economic Development Office to endeavor to hire a part-time digital marketing specialist. Uh, that job is, was posted today and you will start seeing that advertised. We will advertise it on our channels. Uh, but we are looking for a digital marketing specialist, which is a 19 and a half hour part-time job in this office. And that person's focus will be uh, to take and, and work with me on messaging uh, and target audiences, building our, our databases, building our lists, building our presence in the digital world so that we can take and really uh, start to, to move. You, you saw on, on Sam's timeline that uh, come September of this year, right now we're tiptoeing, you know, we're, we're, we're being very cautious because again, we have a brand to protect, but come September, we wanna hit the ground running and hopefully this position is filled, we've got the right person in it and we can uh, go from there. So enough from me, I just wanna again thank, can't thank Professor Tomczyk and the team enough, great group of people to work with. I wanna thank the marketing committee uh, they have gone over and above, uh, you know, typically many of the committees meet, you know, monthly or on a committee level, of course, the commission meets monthly, but on the committee level, you know, monthly, every, you know, bi-monthly, our marketing committee chaired by Mark Jingers, we met every two weeks and sometimes more often than that to keep this ball moving so we can build out uh, these channels. So lots of thanks to go around. Uh, so lastly, uh, Chairman Cervoni, I will turn it back to you, but uh, my sincere thanks to you and uh, our fellow council, your fellow counselors for giving us the opportunity to share this exciting venture with you. Thanks. Well, thank you all, um, all who presented, all who worked on the presentation. Um, it's very impressive. Uh, Tim, thank you for turning it back over to me. I'm not sure why you would turn it back over, over to me after the caliber of a presentation we just experienced, but I'll do my best. Um, no, in all seriousness, thank you. Uh, this is uh, a tremendous amount of work. Um, I'd, I'd say it's timely, but I think it's probably maybe a little bit past due. Um, I think it's, it's critical marketing in the modern world to have a, a strong digital platform. You know, I think if manufacturers and um, Warehousers, employers are looking for places to relocate to. They're all using the web. Uh, so to increase our social media platform and our web digital platform um, is kind of essential at this point. You know, Tim, to your point, within Connecticut, um, we're kind of optimal. We're, we're you know, I hate to sound like I'm bragging, but we're we're better than competitive within the state, but we're not competing in the state, merely in the state of Connecticut. As you, you all pointed out, we're, we're competing on an international market. Um, so thank you for this. And uh, I look forward to continuing to experience the results that come from it. First comment is from Councillor Laffin. Thank you, Penny. I agree a lot with what Penny has say, and uh, congratulations to all the, the recent grads and, and whatnot. Um, I uh, are we going to get a copy of the presentation and the statistics um, think, either included or separately? I think it was already emailed to us. Oh, then I totally missed it. I'll have to go back to all my email. Um, so the, the next part, though, which I found my next question, I found uh, really fascinating and I'm interested in hearing more um, because your your younger you this is for the, the, the grad the um, your younger users and now professionals the, the the fear of negative comments is so strong that it almost took Facebook out of the running for for use is that the that's the general agreement or yeah the agreement I can I can talk a little bit more about that. It's not out of the running per se. It is currently on pause uh, because out of all the social media channels, Facebook is the one where it has the most potential for a lot of negative comments or just completely off track comments and conversations to happen and derail posts. 
And so we had some concerns about that. Um, uh, we conducted an interview with uh, the man who actually runs Billerica, uh, Massachusetts's um, town Facebook page. And what we learned from that is that it takes a lot of time to oversee those comments, respond to them in a uh, professional way and just figure out how to handle it all. And so what we decided with uh, Tim Ryan and the council was that it was safest to wait until we had more hands on deck and more time to focus solely on Facebook, which we decided was once all the other pages, uh, specifically LinkedIn and Instagram were more settled so that we could dedicate more of our time to Facebook and overseeing those conversations and making sure we had the page set up the way we wanted to and controlled the way we wanted it. Great. So so you think it, you need like a team of people or somebody what dedicated full time to just monitor the comments at times or yeah someone who is has more time to fully look at the comments and run through them than uh probably someone who's in the middle of classes did which was what everyone on our team was doing uh and so it just wasn't the right time so we detailed out posts we kind of wrote up like a uh messaging and stuff for it we have it all prepped uh, it's just basically waiting to hit the start button, waiting to have the right person on the team to hit that start button. And Kasra Lathman, if I may. So, you know, the, the different respective channels, um, you know, Facebook is is more of a, of a local channel. You know, we, we have said um, consistently that economic development is not a department, it's a mindset. And we want to make sure that we're engaging people within the community and, and understanding what they'd like to see, what they think is going to help us, you know, and how, how they can help us attract what types of businesses they'd like to see here, et cetera. So, you know, obviously LinkedIn is, is the one channel that is most directed to the business users themselves. I, I think that's got the most benefit when it goes with, with the broadest reach. Facebook is, is, um, is, is much more local, as is Instagram, frankly. And so we, we feel as if we can build that, that, um, that, that audience with Instagram, very concerned about some of the misbehaviors we've seen on Facebook. Um, you know, all you have to do is look at a couple of things from the Wallingford Forum. For the most part, they're civil, but sometimes they just get they just get out of hand. And, and the last thing we want to do is be refereeing comments. So I, I personally don't ever see the day that uh, we would need somebody full time in this office to monitor that. I don't think that's going to generate us the business leads that, that we're looking for. Um, but we do have, we just, we, we need to make sure, certain that it's not a matter of get the resource and then roll out the plan. It's a matter of, we have to believe that the plan is going to bear fruit and the right type of fruit uh, before we want to dedicate the resources. So um, I think, you know, with the, um, uh, the, the way we're going with the new uh, part-time person, uh, we'll be able to take and strengthen the channels that we feel will give us the most, and, and, uh, the most uh, opportunity to strengthen a message to the audiences that we most want to reach. And then uh, we'll, we'll see if we grow into Facebook. We, never may, we may never grow into Facebook. We may never get comfortable with it, but step at a time. Yeah, no, and it makes complete sense. And, and Councilor Zandri, I think he's the moderator of like 23 of those Wallingford pages. So he'll be able to address that um, more directly uh, with experience. But um, no, I agree. I was just curious what the, the whole breakdown and the explanation was. But I, you know, I totally agree. So uh, great job again, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of Councillor Zandri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's a great presentation, everybody. I, I really, I, I'm really excited to see the work that you guys have put together. And, and I kind of appreciate Councillor Laugh and kind of leading me in because I, I was kind of going to go, go down that route. Um, I, you know, with, with, with respect to Facebook. So just a couple of comments on that. I will, I will tell you from, from my experience of running a, quite a few of the Wallingford forums, the different groups, news and information group, there's, there's a delicate balance. So it, the portrayal is absolutely correct. If you're going to have an open forum for posts and discussion, you're going to lend to a lot of potential where you're going to get a lot of off track, negative comments and so forth. So the the assessment is really kind of spot on. I, I will tell you with my, um, the groups that I have a lot more flexibility with where I'm trying to encourage discussion as 
off the track as it gets like the political discussion group it it gets heated it gets bad and then it, it gets downright downright degrading and, and beyond the point of what you're trying to do there and i'm i'm sure i'm sure with the breadth of experience that all of you have um, you're you're quite well of a lot of the administrative controls that you can have on Facebook. And the reason I'm kind of almost I'm almost you know asking you to look at it or reposition or consider it is for the following for the following reasons. I do believe that you will get a lot of traffic to a Facebook page only because I think a lot of people are habit formed. They're moving away from going to straight up searches now. Perhaps. From the global perspective, people will use Bing. They will use um, Google to to search up what they're when they're trying to look for an area that they want to locate in. And if we want to move our whatever to the northeast, and they start looking, they start looking, you know, by large search. When they start to scale down, they do go to Facebook. A lot of people even today, when they're looking for a place to go eat or something to go do, they're looking for that Facebook page because the Facebook pages that get put together today are the ways that websites used to get put together back in the day. A little bit about us, our, our office hours or the times that we're open, our phone number and so forth. So a lot of a lot of companies today forego a straight up website and they go back to Facebook. And so the point that I'm trying to make here is there's a lot of control administratively you can do where you're trying to put up information and not necessarily have a full engagement of conversation, even on a business type page. You can put up posts and then turn off commenting. You have the ability to go in and administer who can even post on the page. It could only be the certain group of people that are able, even able to post on the page in the first place. And you could turn those comments off right away so that the only the administrators can go in and append a post or add a comment and so on. So. I want to encourage the use of it only because I feel like it is it is one of those launching platforms into the the other areas with uh, entities like Facebook buying up some of these secondary um, social media sites and then pulling them in. It almost makes for a uh, like a disassociation when you don't have that anchor site like a Facebook versus having an Instagram page or doing something on Twitter. I agree that LinkedIn is is the go to corporate page but it's a lot it's still people default to facebook first so i really i I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that it's not like off or you know completely backburnered you're taking a measured approach to it um and again i would defer to you know the expertise and of the marketing that that you all have you guys have more marketing expertise than than i would have i'm just trying to speak from the aspect of running some of these groups for almost 10 years now and and there's a delicate balance, but I, I think there's there is a value there if you can figure out how to be tactical about it so that you're not consuming a lot of your time. And really, my my thoughts were more of a comment back to everybody than a question. So, you know, with that, I'll kind of wrap it up. But I, I really do appreciate the presentation. It was was fantastic to see. And I'm I'm glad to see us moving forward. And, and I appreciate all the hard work you've all done. So thank you very much. Councillor Testa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, thank you to all of you who are put so much time and effort into this. That was just a very impressive presentation, very uh, refreshing uh, to see that our Economic Development Commission and Mr. Ryan, great job that they're, you know, they're they're doing this type of work. So this was just really great to see. You all should be um, certainly very proud of yourselves. This is some great work. I, I'm just going to touch base quickly on this Facebook discussion. I, I, as we were talking, and everybody was talking, and even as um, I believe it was Samantha mentioned the uh, the the consideration of a Facebook page, I was reminded. I reminded myself that we are talking about economic development, and and that the going back to the goals. So the utilization of the different platforms that they've all put, you've all put together makes a lot of sense. Um, you can always find people that could say, gee, you know, the town should have a Facebook page, but why? And mostly it's just for information dissemination. It, the town crier, being the local town crier to the local people. Economic development's objective is to reach out to businesses, um, not to tell everybody whether it's going to be a snow day or, or, or other types of fun things. 
that Facebook pages are used for as an, from an informational perspective. So I think as you pursue the consideration of use of Facebook, I don't think it's unreasonable to say maybe we should have, you might have a Wallingford EDC Facebook page versus Town of Wallingford Facebook page. And that might even provide you the opportunity to institute some of the controls you said may or may not be you know, available to us. It doesn't have to be a very, uh, an ongoing open dialogue that a local Facebook page might have or a community forum has. It's your objectives are, are, are more uh, defined about, around businesses and reaching out to businesses. So perhaps it could be more of an informational touch base with our Facebook page, but doesn't have to have a bunch of ongoing commentaries going back and forth that have to be regulated. Perhaps not, but that, that was my thought on that. There, there can be a time, and I think it's all already overdue, where the town should have um, the ability to utilize Facebook as an informational perspective uh, um, uh, um, platform. But that's something that isn't necessarily in the EDC operation. That should be a separate, could very easily be a separate department in government. Uh, so I don't think you'd have as many, as many of the problems we might uh, think we would be faced with if we, we, we tie everything into a general Facebook page for the town. But anyway, congratulations to all of you on your, on your success in your education, your, your, the successes you're having already in your careers. And I'm looking forward to seeing what else you all have in store for us. Uh, because I'm sure it's going to be productive and it's going to be uh, it's going to be exciting. So thank you again, very much. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all we have for comments from the council. Uh, would any members of the public like to comment or question? I'll give people a few more seconds to type. In the interim. Uh, Tim, would you like to offer anything and wrap up? Uh, just th thank you. Uh, I, I'd like to ask the council. I know you, you all have your full time jobs and, and uh, your political job as well, but um, you're part of the team. So as, as, as we continue to take and, and find our way through uh, very deliberately, very purposely, um, you know, if you see opportunities that several have been shared tonight. So I thank you for those comments from, uh, from councilors. You know, um, please reach out, uh, reach out on through our digital channels. Give me a call, however, but um, let's let's all engage uh, in getting the message out about Wallingford in uh, in this new way. We know we're sitting on a pearl, and um, you know we want to make sure that uh, we can attract, uh, that make this town attractive to those the right companies out there. So thank you all, and, and thank you again for your time this evening in allowing us to present something that we've uh, we're very proud of. Uh, well, thank you all again, uh, those of you who presented, and congratulations um, to those of you who have completed degrees and the like, and uh, you clearly have promising futures. Thank you for lending your talents to Wallingford, and uh, clearly we will benefit uh, in the immediate future and in the ongoing future. Um, with that, that is all the business we have on the agenda, and I will end the recording and adjourn the meeting. Thank you all. Have a good night.